I'm going to take a wild guess that if you're in the crypto DeFi game, you are probably interested in maximizing the amount of profits that you can take during this cycle, really any cycle, because you can make money in any market condition. There's a strategy for everything. We're going to talk a little bit more on the bullish side of things. We're going to talk correlated pairs. We're going to talk how can you get the best of both worlds. You're earning yields in, let's just say, yield farming. And you're earning price appreciation on those assets, and one of them isn't dragging you down, or you're not getting convert. You how do you maximize earnings? How do you maximize profits? Gordon is going to walk us through um, his thoughts and kind of uh, take a screenshot of this spreadsheet. By the way, this is an ongoing spreadsheet with fast track clients, and in the UIG, where we're always kind of finding some of the best pairs and opportunities and sharing it on this spreadsheet. So. I know it's YouTube. I know it's free, but literally people pay for this. Screenshot it and um, you know shift through it. Gordon, what do you got? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're always trying to be prepared, Lucas, as you said. And I think as we, you know, move through the bull market, there's going to be a period of time where we really see alts, you know, significantly outperforming Bitcoin. And if we want to position ourselves to benefit from that as much as possible, then, you know, we need to seriously be thinking about different correlated pairs. Because as you alluded to, if we're in only stable pair coins when it comes to you know the bull market really moving then if we're in usdt with eth for example that stable coin acts as an anchor preventing us from participating in all of the price appreciation so the strategy or the idea with you know moving into correlated pairs in an excessive bull cycle is that we get to participate in more of the upside when those correlated tokens actually make a move. And yeah, there's a number of different pairs in this spreadsheet that I'm keeping an eye on as we move towards Q4, as we move towards Q1 of next year. And you've probably seen us referencing this DeFi Llama correlation matrix as well on the channel here. And we use this pretty much every day with clients to think about the correlation coefficient between two different assets. And in this case, we're looking very quickly at Solana and render. And the idea here, guys, is that we want to get or have at least a correlation coefficient of 0 0.5 or above. That means that the assets are highly correlated, which means that we have a higher likelihood of staying in range when those assets begin to move to the upside, because they're very likely to move together in tandem. So, you know, just showing this example for Solana and render here on DeFi Llama, you can see we've got a correlation coefficient of 0 0.84 on a yearly time frame and 0 0.91 on a monthly time frame. And again, we can look at a few different pools and there's a few different pools I'm keeping an eye on as we move into Q4 and Q1. So, you know, this Sol Render pool, this is actually available over on Orca here. And I was in this pool a few months ago, Lucas, and you probably remember with the run up in prices in mm -hmm. March of this year, we were seeing Render and Solana making big moves following in Bitcoin's footsteps as Bitcoin went towards 73,000. And, you know, this particular pool was making very, very good gains. Even at a very just quick snapshot here, mm. we're seeing that with a, you know, you, we could go 7% below, 7% above the spot price. That's giving us half a percent per day. And mm. we're starting to just see the very early signs now of more volume and liquidity coming back into some of these correlated pairs because, you know, there was a bit of a dip as we saw Bitcoin retrace for May, June, July. And during the summer, the volumes were down a little bit in some of these pools, but we're starting to see the early signs of more capital and more liquidity flowing through correlated pairs. And, you know, with a 14% wide range, getting half a percent per day is, you know, it's pretty good work. Um, you know, we're seeing this not just with Solana and Render. Uh, there's a couple other examples. You know, Tau, BitTensor Tau has been another token that has got, you know, crazy price movement in the past week. I think it's up about 40, 50% in the past mm -hmm. seven days alone. And there's another pool here for Wrap Tau and ETH on Mainnet. And again, we can see 24 hour volumes in this pool have gone up close to about, you know, four or five million. I think it was showing us. But I was even noticing that if we open up the pool analytics, you can see just how these volumes, apologies, you can see just how these volumes have been increasing over the past week or two. You know, we're seeing this jump in volume and how this volume is growing day over day, week over week for this particular pool. So, 
again, we're starting to see these early signs of more volume, more liquidity coming back into these correlated pairs, which means more opportunity for us to earn consistent fees as liquidity providers. So mm -hmm. as we look to the future, again, another quick option here, render an Ethereum on mainnet again, this pool has been seeing, you know, increases in volume over the past few days. This was down at two or 300,000 in terms of 24 hour volume just a few days ago when I was checking it. So, you know, I'm looking towards Q4. I'm looking strategically about correlated pairs that are going to be seeing more volume increases in TVL for me as a liquidity provider to capitalize on, you know, in terms of fees, but also because of the fact that as render and ETH appreciate in price, we're going to participate in a lot of that price movement to the upside because the assets are correlated and we will get the fees on top of all the price appreciation. So, you know, thinking a few months ahead, we're starting to see those early signs of, you know, more volume coming through these pairs. Mm -hmm. And I want to position myself, you know, as, strate as strategically as possible over the next couple of months. So good. If anyone has any questions, do leave it in the comments. And actually, yeah, I took some notes here. I've got uh, a video on Crystal. I've got a video on Orca. I've got a video on uh, that goes into correlation a little bit deeper. We'll put those in the description below so you can kind of continue your education, so to speak. But if you have any questions, uh, do let us know. And these videos are ultimately for you. This entire YouTube channel is for you. So don't don't hesitate to let us know what you'd like to see. Gordon, really, really good work. I think um, your ability to, you always mention every video or every time we talk, it's like, you look three months ahead, six months ahead what could be coming down the pipeline. And like, I would argue that that's not, why do you think so few people actually do that? I'm going to pose that question to you really quickly. Why do you think so few people actually take the time to think? Cause it is difficult. Like I'm not, it's, there's a lot of quotes on like thinking. I don't know who said this one, but it's like basically very few people actually think they think they think, mm -hmm. but they're not actually thinking it's a skill you learn. Why do you think so few people take the time to think through this stuff? Yeah, I think, sometimes we can get blinded by, you know, the immediate gratification. And that's, that's a reality in liquidity providing as well, because you get, sure. you know, you get these numbers flashing up for sure. half a percent per day, and people want to chase this number um, for the next 24 hours, and sometimes, you know, forget to zoom out and look at the bigger picture. And, you know, you, we've talked about this on other videos on the channel and in the community where, you know, you can get blinded by chasing the yield sometimes, but if you don't factor in the bigger picture and the longer term strategy, you know, this yield, it's, as we said, this was even higher back in March, but then this yield was, was much lower for this pool yes. for the, the entire summer. So yes. you need to be strategic. You need to know how to play the different seasons of the market. And, yes. you know, it's not just three or six months. It's, you know, sometimes one year, two years, four years. Yeah. I'm thinking about those different seasons as well. I love it. If anyone has any follow-up stuff, leave it in the comments. With that said, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. We'll leave some links for related videos below. Uh, Gordon, thanks for your time.